Hi, welcome fans and friends again to the Jadu Lifestyle podcast where we you can get a life and live it too. We Jadu Lifestyle podcast, we actually cover a lot of different avenues, areas, self-improvement, things to help you, the business owner, to learn what you could do, tips and tips and stuff, uh, things that you can use to save time, save money, get your life together and really optimize your life. So Today, we have Jennifer Federman as our guest, and you're going to be really, really excited because, and I don't know if, I, I probably will let her say it, but um, I'll let her say her nickname. Jennifer, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. So tell us a little bit about your background. So my background is in mental health actually. Okay. Um, so I have a background in mental health and religious studies with a concentration um, in Christianity and Islamic studies. So I have um, been a case manager. I've been a domestic violence counselor in the past. I have worked with Alzheimer's residents. Uh, and then a lot of that was just really hard for me as far as on my body being in the car all the time and um, going to see clients. So I chose to um, quit and become a stay at home mom. And then that kind of led me to the right. career that I'm in now. Okay, we're going to go into that in detail. But what I'd like you to do is to tell my fans your nickname. Oh, my, so my nickname is Jen the Sex Lady. <laughs> now. But what did they call you? They Call me when you go to your BNI meeting and stuff, what do they call you? They call me the sex lady. Yeah, the sex lady. So I think my yes. my audience is going to be very excited to hear what it is, what that means. But how did you get into, what are you doing now? So now I'm a pure romance consultant. And I kind of fell into it after going to a party and really enjoying it. And I needed to go back to work when my daughter was four months old and I needed flexibility. So when I was presented with this opportunity, it just seemed like the perfect fit of flexibility and fun. So I went ahead and jumped at the opportunity. Okay. What do you do exactly that our business owners could say, this is something that I either want to not only participate in or buy or use or whatever I know you do a lot of education um what how how would you tell our our listeners to to look into what you do so I specialize in sexual health and relationships um especially right now we're at home and we um a lot of us are in the house with our significant other that we haven't been in the house for this long of a period of time well ever so I uh do virtual parties uh, right now on Zoom video, and I've been doing a lot of uh, education in my VIP group as well on Facebook, and we specialize in bath, beauty, relationship enhancement products, as well as um, sexual health. Okay, now, I re- the way we got to know each other is through, I invited you to come do a party for some of my ladies that were in my journalism class, my journalist journaling class. And um, you came, you drove all the way from Wesley Chapel and you came to Sarasota to do the party. You were very excited about what you do. And my girls were also very excited about what you do. So you said at one point that you had retired your husband. What, what, Mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about that? So my husband is now a stay-at-home dad. Um, He became that way because I had my second daughter, and she was five weeks old, and he was a guidance counselor um, for uh, Pasco Ketty, and he was uh, released from his job. He wasn't rehired, and he came home one day, and he explained to me that he wasn't going to be rehired, and then he had basically lost his job. And I was faced with a very hard decision of either him going and trying to find a new job that didn't work with our schedule and our lifestyle or deciding to make him a stay-at-home dad. 
And the person who kind of helped me make that decision was my CEO who called me and said, you've got this, you can do this. If you need help, let me know. Um, I will wire you money, which I've never heard of a CEO do ever. And he's like, but I trust that you have this. And so I went ahead and I booked a few more parties and um, away I went. So I went from being a uh, $60,000 earner to a um, over $100,000 just through some determination and change of practices. Wow. Okay. So now you've tackled two very, I, I, I don't know if this is sensitive, but something that areas that that most people kind of balk at first of all you're a direct selling business right Mm -hmm. yes okay and then you took on a topic that deals with sexual health and deals with personal intimate things that you know we would we need we but we, it's taboo to talk about. We don't mm-hmm. say it aloud. We whisper it. So um, how do you feel now that you have achieved the success that you have? And can you tell me a little bit about, about how you felt when you made that decision? Were you scared? Were you, what, how did you feel? I was nervous about making that leap. I was also nervous about how, taboo the subject sometimes is, but my stance on it is that it should be normalized because it can be normalized in a lot of ways. Um, In high school, when we are getting some of that sexual health education, they never talk about um, the different aspects of it that we need to know, that if something hurts, that we should question it, that it's not normal to have uh, pain during a period or pain during... um, during a relationship, um, et cetera. So it's really important to question that and find answers, whether it be through yourself or through your sex lady, but questions are important for our health. And if it's important for our regular health, why wouldn't it be important for our sexual health? So you'd be surprised how many people I encounter who either think of sexual health as a dirty word or don't know very much about their bodies. Yes, I understand that. And uh, I'll tell you my personal experience. It was taboo to talk about. Don't ask questions. You know, you, you never, we, in my, my upbringing, my country, it was very reserved. I came from an Indian background and they don't talk about that stuff. In fact, um, when I was growing up, my, my mother's age, they married them off as children. Um, they married them off as soon as they, they started seeing their the period they literally would arrange marriage some of them the arranged marriage was child you see a baby and a boy baby and a girl baby and they marry them off technically and when they grew older they just came together so it was not something that we talked about you had to learn it on your own so that's why for me the topic itself is kind of maybe uncomfortable and I, I know a lot of my listeners may have the same feeling because, you know, our age group, we're in Mm -hmm. our 60s, late 50s, our our 70s, you know, we, Sarasota has the oldest living population. It's like, do you have an age group that that you find is more receptive to this? So I have clients and I meet people who are ages 18 to 80. And I had um, an older woman who was in her early 80s who came to a party. Um, She was invited by a friend, and she sat front and center. And you should have seen the size of her eyes as she was listening to me. And she said, I feel like every woman over the age of 60 should come to a party for the education, she said. Because the things that I've learned will help me in my relationship, she said, because a lot of times I sit with my girlfriends and I complain about this or that or the other about my husband when you've provided so many solutions just in this fun atmosphere that was more educational than I expected. Wow, that's fantastic. Is that what fuels your passion? What fuels your passion? Because I know I see you all the time. I follow you on Facebook. I admire what you do. And what fuels your passion? Education is what fuels my passion. 
the knowledge that I'm helping people all the time. I'll have people who message me telling me, um, thank you for so much. You've saved my marriage or thank you so much. You helped me know that it's okay for me to be single as I am um, figuring out what I want instead of what someone else might want before I decide to jump into my next relationship. So those are the things that are really, really fulfilling for me is knowing that I'm making an impact and knowing that I'm helping people. So what advice would you give somebody who um, maybe might be on the on the defense with whether or not to go into a direct marketing business first, secondly, to go into something like what you are doing, not so much. Well, I, I'm not quite sure. Oh, I should ask, is education the main crux of your reps, you know, the groups, the people that you have in the business, is that where and how they find a business or how is the business actually done? Pure Romance definitely stands on education. Our founder believes so much in sexual health education and also does a lot of um, talks and panels about um, women's health, um, trans health, as well as men's health as well, because it's so important across the board. So that's where her stance is. So she's always also doing um, education panels to help us be better at our craft. I would never say I know everything there is about sexual health, but what stands the difference between us and other um, possible direct sellers companies is that we know that and we are always willing to stay the student and also learn new things and better our our um, sense of sexual health so we can help others. Okay. Thank you. So do you depend totally on, on this business to f finance your household, f fuel the financial part of your household? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm a um, sole income provider, um, which means that I make all the money and it fuels the household bills and mortgage and food on the table. Um, I am where the buck stops, so to speak. So I, um, but my household depends on my income for everything. And how long have you been with this company? Six years. Okay. And your husband is totally supportive. I'm sure. Oh yeah. He definitely very much. He is. gets to right have now, fun. He's homeschooling. Yeah. And right now he's homeschooling the kids. So he's, um, getting them on their zoom calls and doing what they have to do. He's holding the baby. Um, so he's absolutely supportive. I let him know what I got to wow. do for the day and he makes it happen. Wow. Now, do you, would you say that this company has improved your relationship with your husband? I absolutely would say that. Um, I, I, te I, I, I teach him things that um, I'm learning along the way, too, and he's super supportive. And we ever have, whenever we have, we have a new launch product, he's the first one who's like, ooh, what'd you guys get? Ooh, what can we get together, right? So um, it definitely keeps things exciting. And... Um... With respect to the the fans and the friends that listen to my podcast and even others that will eventually get to know, you know, your business and things like that, um, what is the biggest uh, benefit you would say people would get from knowing you, your company, knowing what you do? I would say education and really superior products as well. Um, the education on how to use the products as well as why they might need a certain product. Um, what's on the market at times as far as sexual health products aren't the best for our bodies. So I just give them an idea of what ingredients are in products and the importance of also doing their own research. So as they see things and they see the superiority of our products per per se, compared to something they would might pick up at Walmart, right? 